Hey everybody, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school computer science teacher. We are working on a space shooter game that you see right here. And uh, in the previous part, we learned how to add keyboard input. So now my spaceship can move to the right, to the left as far as the screen edges, down to the edge, and up as far as the halfway point on the screen where the nose is touching the top. And so today we are going to learn how to add touch input. Now that works in two ways. One is by using your mouse to click or if you're on mobile you can tap on the screen. And uh, it's going to be a little bit different and in some ways a little bit easier, but we are going to use what we did in the keyboard section. So if you didn't go and uh, try out the keyboard input video already, you need that part done in order for our touch input to work. Okay, so let's get started on touch input. So here's the code that we used for the keyboard input, and importantly we need these limits here that we want to make sure we don't exceed. So the touch input, which as I said is also mouse input, clicking in the mouse counts as touching, um, it's going to be done in a sort of a similar way. Last time for the keyboard we had if the input is key pressed method, um, and now we're going to have an is touched method. So if gdx.input dot is touched and you can see there's another method there that we are not going to use we're just going to use the boolean is touched method no parameters so if the user is touching the screen we want to try to move the ship towards where they're touching uh, directly now an advantage of this over the keyboard input is you can move on kind of an angle that's not a 45 or a 90 degree angle so we're going to have a few steps here the first step is to get the screen position of the touch, the place that the user is touching. Now, the reason it's the screen position is because that's what uh, libgdx gives you. We're going to need to convert that into a world position, where in the world uh, units is being touched. Um, and so let's write that down, um, convert to a world position. We're going to calculate the um, x and y differences, and we're going to scale everything to make sure that we're not moving too quickly. So scale to uh, the maximum speed of the ship. Okay, and so for that we're going to need to use the, the delta time. Let me just scroll up to show you that again. Delta time is how much time uh, is passed in this render cycle. Okay, so let's first start by getting the screen position of the touch. Uh, we're going to store that in a couple of floats. So we have a float for the, I'm going to call it X, touch. I'm just going to use the word pixels just to be super clear. That is the pixel location, not the world units location. gdx.input.getx. And that's that's where it is. Float y touch pixels is gdx.input.gety. Okay, so once again, those are pixel coordinates, which are not super helpful to us yet. So we're going to need to convert that into a world position. So to do this, we're going to use a new class, I think we haven't used this before, called Vector2. It's part of the bad logic libgdx stuff, uh, which basically stores two floats. And it can be, you can think of it like a point, or you can think of it as a directional vector. It doesn't really matter how you think of it. It's storing two floating point values. The first one's x, the second one is y. And so I'm going to call it touch point. And it's an object, so a new Vector2. You can see there's also a Vector3 and you can give it the x and y coordinates that we just captured. Okay, so we have a vector 2 which has the touch coordinates for the um, x and for the y. Now in order to convert this into the world coordinates we're going to need a method in the viewport class. The viewport is kind of our interface between what the user sees and what's happening in the game. So let's look at the documentation for that now. Okay, so here's the viewport class. Let me just scroll down to unproject. There's the method we want. You give it the screen coordinates. Hey, we've got that. Transforms the specified screen coordinate to world coordinates. Perfect. So we want to use the viewport's unproject method, giving it the screen coordinates vector, and it returns a vector too. So I'm going to reuse 
my touch point variable here like this. Touch point is now going to become equal to viewport dot unproject and I will give it touch point as its parameter. So I give it the parameter and essentially this is like modifying touch point to turn it into a world coordinates uh, point. Okay, so let's discuss how we're going to use this now. So here's an example of I've got the ship down in that bottom left corner and imagine the user's touching where that sort of blue dot is. And so we're going to calculate the difference between where the ship is um, in the x direction and in the y direction. And those could be negative numbers if, uh, for example, the dot was down below the ship, y touch difference would be a negative number. And then from that we're going to calculate the actual sort of straight line distance from the ship to the dot. We'll do this in two parts. First we're going to find the center of the ship and we're going to store it in another vector 2 and I'll call it player ship center. Um, so a new vector 2 and there is a way to do this with your bounding box to, to find the center point but it, it, there's no need to go into it. We can just do it ourselves here. So um, we're going to go player ship dot uh, bounding box dot x then we add on to that the width of the ships which is player ship dot bounding box dot width so that is the um, x location of the center of the ship and we're going to do the very same thing for the y location except we're going to use y and height instead so maybe I'll just move this down to make it a little easier for you to see So for y, we change this to a, the y coordinate and we change width to height. And so this will now be a vector 2 that stores the center location of the ship. Now the reason we want that is because rather than us calculating the actual distance ourselves using like Pythagorean theorem, the vector 2 class has a distance method built into it. So I'm going to make a new variable called uh, touch distance. So this is the straight line distance along the hypotenuse. It'll be the distance between touch the touch point. So dst is the distance function, and you just give it a vector, the player ship center. So what's the distance between these two points? That's the touch distance, and it's uh, it's just a single number, not an x and a y coordinate, just a distance. Now we get to use that as needed. Okay, so we want one more. Um, finicky little issue here is that we don't want to move the ship if the player is touching very very close to the ship because what would happen is with just with the accuracy of the touch screen you might get this little vibration happening back and forth as the ship moves a little bit to one side of the, their finger and then a little bit to the other side moving by pixel and so we're, we're going to avoid that by making a, a minimum threshold for movement. I'm going to scroll to the very top up to this world parameters area. This is in the game screen class make a new private final float. So this is a constant. It's a floating point number and we're going to call it um, let's say movement threshold. Uh, maybe touch movement threshold. And I'm going to set it to um, something pretty small right now. We'll see if that's good enough. Uh, okay so we want to only move if that touch distance is big enough. So if touch distance is greater than that movement threshold, what did I call it? Touch movement threshold, then we're going to go ahead and do all the other stuff. So first we're going to have to find out what are the x and y touch differences. So we know the coordinates of this point and we know the coordinates of this point so we can calculate these differences. I'm going to take the um, blue touch point here and I'm going to subtract the player ship. So for x we're going to have x touch difference and that will be the touch point dot the x value and we subtract the player ship center player ship center dot x value. We're going to do the same thing for the y value using y and y. And I suppose this could have been a vector as well, but we don't need it to be. Now let's go back to our diagram to see what we have to do with this. 
we have to convert this from a distance into how far do we actually want to move. So the movement might not be so far if the ship can't make it all the way to the touch point in the current render cycle, which is going to be typical, right? It takes several render cycles for one second to pass, like maybe 50 or 60 render cycles. So the ship does not move very far in a single cycle. Let's figure out how far it's actually going to go. So you have to understand first that distance is speed times time. And in our case, the distance traveled is going to be the player ship's movement speed times the delta time. That is the sort of diagonal distance though, not the x and y distance. So let's look at a specific example here to try to make this um, clear. Let's say that the blue dot there is a y difference of 32, this is world units, and an x difference of 51 world units. So it's up a bit and over a little bit more. That touch distance I just calculated is about 60.21. We're going to use these numbers in a ratio. So the y component of the movement is going to be 32 out of 60, and the x component of the movement is going to be 51 out of 60. So we're going to sort of switch this all into the movement speed units. So I think we had a speed of 48, something like that. So if our movement speed, we want it to be 48, we can take our y movement number, 32, divide it by 60.21, that's kind of the fraction that is the y component, and then multiply it by 48, we get a total of 25.51. In the x direction we get 40.66. If you um, do your Pythagorean theorem with those two values, you'll get that 48 movement speed that we're looking for. Essentially we're trying to scale everything down or up to the actual movement speed that is defined by the ship itself. Once again the distance moved is going to be the movement speed times delta time and we have to just separate that out into the x and y directions and the movement speed itself is based on those touch distances also. So the x movement speed as an example, or sorry the x movement distance is going to be the x movement speed times the time. So let's just do to start with player ship dot movement speed times delta time. So that would be if you were fully moving in the x direction, 100% to the right as fast as possible. But we need to scale that according to how much of the um, how much of the movement is happening in the x direction as opposed to the y direction. We're going to take the x touch difference and divide it by the total touch distance and then multiply that by the movement speed, just like we did in the example a second ago. So the first part scales it appropriately to according to how much of the movement is happening in the x direction, and the second part here multiplies it by the actual movement speed, last it's delta time so that we're not moving um, you know, a full 48, it'll just be a fraction of that. We do the same thing in the y direction, the y movement is the y touch difference, uh, but uh, multiplied by these same values. So we're actually almost finished. The only thing we have to be careful of is that we don't move past the edge of the screen. Let me scroll back up to how we did that with the keyboard input. We said if the key, for example, was pressed to the right and the right limit was more than zero, that is you could move some distance to the right, we did this. We translated the minimum of the what we were trying to move and the right limit itself, whichever was smaller in that case because we were moving to the right. All we have to do now is figure out how far we can move. So the current x movement amount, for example, might be too big. Maybe we want to move um, 20 units, but there's only 10 until we get to the edge of the screen. So we're going to just scale it if necessary, and we have to be careful about which direction we're moving. So if the x move number is positive, sorry, greater than zero, there we go, then we want to use the maximum, or sorry, the minimum value of the current x move value or the right limit. So x move is going to become equal to math dot minimum, so whichever is smaller, x move as it currently is, or the right limit. If the right limit is the smaller number, then x move gets kind of scaled down to that. Otherwise, we're going to 
we know that x move is negative, and we say it has to be equal to math dot maximum of x move and the left limit. So if that is confusing, I apologize. Please go back and take another look at how we handled this up here. We're going to deal with these right now for both x and y, and then we do a single translation uh, call. If the y movement, actually I'm going to just copy and paste a bunch of this, save us some effort here. So if the y movement is positive, otherwise it's negative, uh, y move becomes equal to and there. Okay, so if we have a positive number, we want the smallest of y move and the up limit. And if we're moving down, then we want the maximum of the y move and the down limit. Last step is to actually move the ship. Player ship dot translate takes both values, x move, y move. We are ready to test it. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, ready to move the ships. They still move with keyboard movements. And now I'm about to use my mouse simulating a touch point on a mobile device. So when I click here, it moves in that direction. And oh, I see I've made a mistake. It looks like it's going to the top right corner and that's because I calculated the center incorrectly. Let's go fix that right now and then we'll come back and test some more. Way up here, when I calculated the center of the ship I should have divided the width by 2 and divided the height by 2. That was my mistake. Now that'll be the center. Okay and the ship moves, it kind of sticks to well, I'm, as long as I'm holding the mouse button down. And you know, it feels like it's not moving very fast. I wonder if I want to increase the speed a little bit. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. That feels pretty good. Don't want it to be too easy to move around. Um, it does stop at the top. It goes over to the far edge. It goes to the bottom. Everything's looking pretty good that way. Now, a problem we have right now is that if I also, if I click here or here and then also press the keyboard button, it goes twice as fast. So I can kind of cheat by doing both at the same time and that really speeds things up. Um, so to do that you would want to maybe only use keyboard input or touch input, maybe allow the user to choose um, what kind they want for the desktop version. For the mobile version you don't have a lot of people using keyboards and touch at the same time. Okay so I promised I would show you what would happen if we made that threshold too small. So I'm scrolling way back up to the top touch movement threshold. I'm going to set that to, let's try 0.1 and let's see if that's too small. Okay, so everything looks fine when you're quite a ways away from the ship, but if you pause in one place and just move a little bit, you see how it sort of jumps around? That's because in a single render cycle, the ship is moving um, quite far. And that's no good, so you have to find that sweet spot, and I found that 0.5 is fine. Okay, so we have a working game now. Um, we can use touch input to move around the screen. And uh, we have a few more things to do. One is handling what happens when a ship gets uh, destroyed and how the player lives work, as well as the heads up display, displaying things like the score on the screen for the user. Okay, thanks very much. Talk to you soon.